Greetings to all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As Christmas is soon upon us, let us continue to meditate and reflect on the significance of the birth of Christ. Today's meditation is related to a very common but complex emotion, love. At the mention of the word love, one may think of relationships, family, one's hobbies, but today our meditation is taken from 1 John 4, 7 through 21. In the NIV Bible, this portion is aptly titled, God's Love and Ours. There are at least three main points to take from this passage. The first point is that God is love. Verses 7 to 8 say, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Here, the term love is defined, and God is not only the source, but the model. The most significant example of his love is his son, Jesus Christ. Reading verses 9-10, through 10, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. This is the second point made in this passage. God's great sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ, is representative of his love, that through him we, his children, were saved. And God continues to shower his love with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 13 states, We know that we live in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. Our relationship with God is continually strengthened through the gift of the Holy Spirit. How wonderful it is that God's love is so abundant and reliable. It is an unconditional and constant love, regardless of your worth or your status in the world. By this love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, because just as Jesus is, so also are we in this world. Verse 17. This verse is in reference to our fellowship with God. Just as Christ was in fellowship with God, so are we, his believers. The third point in this passage is the concept of love in action. 1 John 4, 21 states, And he has given us this command, Whoever loves God must also love his brother. We as his children cannot simply accept God's love. This is a love meant to be shared. We are not meant to treat one another poorly. How can we dislike those God has loved? We have loved others because we love God. And Jesus Christ has also made note of this when asked about the greatest commandment. Mark 12, 29 to 31 states, The greatest is, Hear Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. The second is like this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Love can be unexpected. It is amazing that despite our flaws, God loves us, so much so that he sent that love to us on earth, being Jesus' birth. Jesus' life showed that love has no boundaries. Remember that Jesus not only spoke to the educated, but also to those considered poor, lowly, and sick. To Jesus, all were deserving of God's love regardless of who they were. As we celebrate the birth of Christ, let us remember that God is love and to love others as he loves us. With that in mind, let us pray. Lord God, thank you for the numerous blessings you have showered upon us. Today, Lord, we are reminded of your abundant love. Though we are undeserving, you have shown time and time again that your love is unconditional. We are grateful to you, Lord, especially in trying times such as these. I pray for each and every one of us, our families, friends, and co-workers. I pray that our meditations are fruitful in our everyday lives, not just in this month, but in the future as well. Pray for everyone's health and safety, and that we as your believers may be able to share the love you have given us with all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.